Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is almost here. That's right, we're just about two days until we can actually get our hands on this game on the Nintendo Switch, the remake of a cult classic coming back in 2024. I can't believe this is happening. I still feel like it's a dream. Like, this is not even a thing. Like, literally, in two days, I get to play one of my favorite video games of all time that's been completely from the ground up remade to look beautiful. And it's still just like a high for me. But it's not about me right now. We're talking about what everybody else has thought about this remake because the reviews are in so is paper mario the thousand year door looking good or is it looking eh, a little paper thin well until nintendo decides to send me a review copy nintendo please are you listening i pretty much just take all the reviews every time a game is coming out put them all together in a big old box and talk to you guys about everything that's been good from the reviews everything that was bad and just all the details in between so that way you know exactly what to expect when you dive into the game of course no spoilers or nothing crazy crazy here besides some slight stuff nothing that's going to hinder or ruin your experience so thank you guys so much for tuning in we are super close to 300,000 subscribers and how cool would it be if we hit 300,000 subscribers on the same day as paper mario the thousand year door releases it's probably not going to happen we're still a little little ways away but you know what let's try to reach it within the same time frame so i can always remember uh one of my favorite video games of all time coming out when we hit 300k but thank you guys so much Make sure you just leave a like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, let's dive into the reviews for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. As you would expect, this remake to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door holds very true to the original. It's still one of the best Mario RPGs, if not the best, and still one of the best Mario games of all time altogether. This game is amazing, and it still is even today so many years later. The graphics really stand out, of course, it's a big positive amongst everybody, just how freaking good this game looks. It is beautiful on the eyes. Everything has been remade from the ground up, giving it a papery sheen and a papery look, and it just feels feels so alive to be back into this world that we grew up with, but now even more alive than ever. But I'm not going to sit here and re-explain this whole entire game. You've probably seen it from at least one or two other reviews. Yes, it's the same story. It's the same essentially everything. Battle system, partners, characters, moments, it all. And it's just kind of remade for the Nintendo Switch. This game obviously runs at 1080p on the TV, 720p in handheld, and 30 frames per second, which a lot of people wanted that 64 frames but apparently from a lot of reviewers and most of the reviewers if not all the reviewers it's not a problem whatsoever so let's actually dive into the pros and cons list and let's start off with the pros nintendo life states how beautiful and amazing the characters and the cast and just pretty much everybody and everything in this game is for instance with vivian a fan favorite partner it's made even more clear that she is indeed confirmed to be transgender and she's actually bullied by her sisters by it and it's actually dug into a lot deeper with this remake. As far as the stories and arcs for all the other characters, they stay primarily the same. Another pro is that yes, even though it's kept at 30 frames per second, Nintendo Life says it is still buttery smooth and runs like a charm. And they say there's only a few, and I mean like three or four instances in the entire game where there's some hiccups, where there's just tons of characters diving into piles and clogging the screen with characters, and that's just going to happen. But said you'll hardly ever notice it unless you're really looking for it. GameSpot also said it runs except well and hardly any drops and you get this across the board with most reviewers it's pretty solid and it seems to run pretty perfectly on switch you know true fans of the original are still gonna want that 60 frames per second but it looks like you might have to wait for switch 2 or sometime in the future to achieve that goal of yours but at the end of the day it seems to be hardly even noticeable in the first place now we got to talk about the music because this is something that I was really hoping did still even though it was getting remixed I wanted it to be improved like I want it to actually be something that's worthwhile listening listening to and not to be like oh it's terrible listen to the original only no apparently the music is really and i mean really really good it takes a page out of origami king which has a beautiful soundtrack and just every new piece of music is completely remixed and it sounds juicy i've heard a lot of tracks already i had to stop myself because i was getting carried away but man it's really really good there's some that they really just add certain instruments to fit the theming better and what's awesome about origami king is that it had specific themes based on specific areas where you battled enemies so the battle theme would change based on each area 
Same thing happens in the Thousand Year Door, and it's not just based on the chapter, it's based on the areas as well. For instance, the theme where you fight a fuzzy down in the sewers beneath Petalburg will be completely different based on you fighting an enemy in Hooktail's castle. And that's awesome! The theming is really so great, and I, and I love that fact that they're just making the music a part of that. And it's one of the many really good things that Origami King actually did and people don't give it credit enough for. IGN brought up the battle mechanics, and I wanted to touch on this in case there's a lot of newcomers watching this video right now and they don't know what to expect from the battle system. Maybe you played Sticker Star, I'm sorry for you, Color Splash or Origami King, and they really need to know exactly what the deal is with this. Well, it's completely different than those games. This is a turn-based RPG. You touch an enemy, you will go to a stage where you will take turns fighting each other. It's very simple. You have jump, you have hammer, and you have your partner abilities. That's really about it. But it's a lot more fun than it sounds. You can actually have button time presses to either guard or super guard and just do different types of abilities better based on how well you hit the button presses that pop up on the prompts on screen. And IGN even said it themselves and said, it's a very simplistic form of battling, yet it's extremely addictive and you will have fun every single battle. And I cannot agree more, at least based on the original version, I loved fighting. It's a lot of fun and there can be some challenges with specific enemies, but you will learn how to dodge and how to attack properly based on the enemies that you come across and encounter throughout your adventure and you'll get used to it. It's a lot of fun, trust me. Now the Thousand Year Door has always been relatively easy and just like GameSpot said, you can choose to make the game harder or easier for yourself depending on the power-ups that you choose. For instance, badges is a great way to make the game a lot harder. You can make your character a glass cannon by simply just picking all badge power up every single time, where if you take a lot of damage or mess up, you'll die pretty quick, but you deal massive amounts of damage because you place tons of badges for your power on Mario, making him an absolute powerhouse. There's a lot of badges to collect. There's around 86 of them, if I'm not mistaken, so definitely get collecting. There's even a collection page, so you'll want to buy or get every single one that you find along your adventure. Next up, we have something that's both a positive and a negative, and that's backtracking. Thankfully, there has been things done to make traversal easier. For instance, there's a brand new warp pipe in the Boggly Woods to help you get across, and there's also a new spring in Key Hall Key, so you don't to do that stupid Yoshi glide on the block thing. Also, there's a new pipe room to take you straight to each chapter so you can go and do those side quests a lot easier now, which is pretty cool. IGN, however, still made it seem like it was a big drag and there was just too many situations of going back and going forward on a specific world. And I can understand that, especially with the Chocola Cola, for instance, where it's a literal quest of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, so I completely understand. But yeah, that seemed to be one of their main concerns or at least their main cons with this game. But it looks like the new pipe room is going to help out a lot, especially with the Trouble Center quest where it causes you to have to go back to previous chapters in order to help somebody in need, which is also another negative for a lot of people. For instance, IGN said that the Trumble Center is just not worth it. Most of the items are very bland except for one, which I can even tell you it is going to be worth, you know, doing the Trouble Center quest to get this one specific reward. Um, and also, Nintendo Life also stated that, yeah, the Trouble Center is just a grind that just goes on and on and on, and you can only take one at a time, which means one request, and you can't leave that request until you, you know, deny it and or finish it. So, yeah, you are going to be stuck on one at a time going to on the list slowly, going to each individual world. It's a lot of backtracking. The Ten Duo also touches on something that I really didn't even think about, and I don't know if Nintendo mentioned this or like the voice lines were clear for a lot of people, but I just now realized, and also they pointed out, that Mario's voice is still Charles Martinet, which is pretty cool. So it's still the same exact voice clips from the original game, just brought over to this game. So yeah, that's pretty cool. There's also a new hint system to actually help you out if you get stuck, which is pretty cool for newer players that might get lost on some of the missions, because it's definitely possible. So that's actually a really cool quality of life change. And also, if Mario dies, you don't have to restart by going through all the cutscenes again and going to the beginning of the area and maybe not making it to the boss room yet. You have to walk all the way back there. No, it picks you right back up from the start of the battle. It skips all the cutscenes and everything like that which is awesome. And apparently this even works for the final parts of the game, which I'm not going to spoil, but there are lots of bosses in a row. So I'm guessing that you only had to restart the boss that you died on. Maybe it's hard to say that would save a lot of heartache for younger players like myself. When I first played this for the first time, I could not get through those three bosses in a row. It was unbelievable. So that is pretty great of Nintendo. Now those are all the positives, but there's still some negatives on the table. 
For instance, there's a lack of new content Nintendo Life states, and a lot of the other reviewers said the same thing. It's the exact same game, which is awesome because it's true to the original, but a little too true, where Mario RPG actually added some extra bosses, which I will get into that in a second. Yes, there's a little something for you, it looks like. Um, but also, yeah, there's just nothing new. There's no side story with Luigi that we were hoping in the Waffle Kingdom. There's no extra worlds or extra levels or anything extra outside of the original game that we already knew about. So yeah, that is kind of a bummer for us returning fans who maybe wanted a little bit more meat on our table here. One of the other cons I've seen from other reviewers as well is that the level design is basic and outdated and the game feels old because it's just mainly horizontal level gameplay, moving from the left to the right, from the right to the left, with a couple exceptions with some hallways. And yeah, you don't have those giant areas like you had in Origami King where it felt like, you know, little open zones for Mario to run around and explore and big areas to move around in in the 3D space. This is more confined. And I'm sure with the future games, it's probably going to take a really good approach where it combines elements from Origami King and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. But yes, the Thousand Year Door is very limited with movement and areas to explore. It's very tight and strict in nature. So I can see a lot of fans of Origami King not liking that part that much. And for instance, with GameSpot, one of their only negative gripes with the game was that the pacing is a little slow at times. There's some chapters or moments that are a lot slower, but still always gradually build up to some bigger moments at the end. Now aside from like an art gallery and some text changes, there's one more new thing apparently in this game uh, because we've got it from a couple of sources and I don't really know myself, I haven't seen anything, but Giga.Day, which is apparently a German publication I believe, claims that there are a few new boss fights in RPGSite.com claims that there are post-game boss fights and yeah so I don't really know what this is about I tried to look up a boss kind of compilation online and normally there's one posted by now haven't seen anything yet so I can't give you guys a confirmation for sure for sure but this is very interesting if there are a couple of extra bosses at the end that would be fun another dragon anybody but no seriously I'm actually would be very happy if there were some additional boss fights like Mario RPG did hopefully it's not the same ones that you fight over and over again Hopefully they're actually new ones, so we're just going to have to wait and see. Overall, the reviews are looking pretty juicy. To go one by one, at least from the ones that I've watched, Nintendo Life gave it a 9 out of 10, GameSpot a 9 out of 10, IGN gave it a 9 out of 10, and of course, Nintendo Duo gave it a 96 out of 100. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that this is a beautiful game on Nintendo Switch right now. It's sitting at a whopping 89 right now on Metacritic, and this just makes me so happy and warms my heart as a huge Paper Mario fan. So get out there, pre-order the game, or pick it up day one, because man, you have to go out there and support this game, so that way we can continue to get amazing Paper Mario games like this one. And I just want to thank all of you for tuning in today, and huge Paper Mario fans out there, we are just two days away, a little less than two two days away now until we can get our hands on this game. But thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was able to answer all your questions and help you out before making that decision to make this purchase. And hopefully that decision is yes. But if I taught you something new or just anything today, stop what you're doing real quick. Leave a like and subscribe. It goes a long way. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.